Hello everyone, Chad here. And in this lesson, we're gonna talk about storage in Kubernetes and more specifically, persistent storage. In Kubernetes, there's this thing called persistent volumes and persistent volume claims. And as you see here in this diagram, the persistent volume is the actual volume, the underlying storage volume that may exist as an NFS volume or a uh, local, you know, storage from the node itself, or it may be temporary storage, or it may be uh, a provisioner such as AWS or Azure or SIBO. This is the underlying storage that uh, connects to Kubernetes and which allows you to uh, make use of it for a pod uh, within a deployment. The persistent volume claim is what you specify in the pod YAML. And as you can see in the left-hand side of your screen, uh, there's a pod YAML. And in the bottom where it's uh, underscored in red, persistent volume claim. This is what you specify to claim the amount of storage that's in the persistent volume claim resource in the lower right-hand corner. Once you claim that, you can use it for the pod. If the pod deletes, uh, because that is the uh, very nature of pods, is to you know, uh, be killed and respawn, a uh, pod is ephemeral by nature. And so uh, the persistent volume claim will continue to hold on to that volume uh, as the pod moves from node to node. So let's go through an example now where we create a persistent volume, a persistent volume claim and a pod to use that volume. If you want to follow along, you can go to killercoda.com slash playgrounds slash scenario slash Kubernetes. And here we have a two node cluster. Let's create a persistent volume. And to get the YAML for a persistent volume, let's just go open a new tab and go to sekates.com slash pv. Pretty simple. And so here we'll see the YAML wrapped in here doc. And this allows me to just copy and paste this into my command line and it'll um, create the resource without me having to, you know, go through the process of creating a file, copying and pasting in that file, and then applying it. I can just do it in one fell swoop here. So I'll copy this. And if we take a look at the persistent volume real quick uh, before we hit enter, we will see that it has a claim ref. This is the important part, which allows you to uh, reference the claim that you want to use for it. Even though the claim doesn't exist yet, we're, we have yet to create it. Uh, we still want to kind of reserve this, if you will, uh, this, this volume to be used by that claim as opposed to picking up the uh, existing storage class. We're going to request one gig and we're going to use host path type volume. So this is just using the uh, storage from the node itself. And in this case, node zero one, it's going to uh, be located at in the amount directory in the data directory. So that's where the data is going to reside. And then it's going to be having the access mode of read, write once. That means only one node at a time can read and write to it. So let's go ahead and hit enter and that volume has been created. So we can do a, a clear to clear the screen and a K get PV. K is short for kubectl, PV is short for persistent volume. And now we see our persistent volume has been created, it's available. So now let's create our PVC so that we can uh, bound that to this volume. For that, I'm gonna open up a new tab and go to sekates.com slash pvc. And here we have a persistent volume claim, or I like to call them PVCs for short. We're using the storage class local store local path. And this is the um, if you if you do a k get sc or k kubectl get storage class, you'll see that this is the one for the killer coda killer coda environment. Uh, but we're gonna uh, use that same uh, access mode, which is important. And then also we're going to request the full amount of storage that's that that volume has, which is one gig in this case. So I will copy that, paste that into my terminal, and hit enter. So now let me clear the screen, and I can get the 
uh, persistent volumes and the persistent volume claims in one uh, command here. So k get pv comma pvc. And now we see we have the persistent volume, which is now bound to the persistent volume claim. Now, all we have left to do is create a pod that will use that persistent volume claim. And as a result, the uh, persistent volume, the underlying persistent volume, and then we'll uh, be able to use that for our container. So let's open up a new tab and go to sekates.com slash pod dash with dash vol, V-O-L. And here is the YAML for a pod uh, wrapped in here doc again. So I will copy that in and paste it in my terminal. As we see here, there is a volume mount section underneath the containers that is going to mount it to the directory user share nginx HTML. The name of the volume mounts has to be the same as below here. So we see this printed twice, PV storage, and then down below here, where we're actually listing out the volumes that are used by the pod, PV storage, and then the persistent volume claim. And the claim name is going to be PV claim, which is the name of our pvc as you can see above i'll hit enter and then that pod has been created so let me clear the screen and do a k get pods really quick before it uh, starts up and there we go container creating and running now if we exec into our pod we can write some data to it and see if it persists so let's see if it it uh, lives beyond the life of the pod all right so let's go ahead and do a k exec to exec into the pod, and then it for interactive terminal, pv dash pod, which is the name of our pod, and then dash dash space sh for shell. Now that I have a shell to the container itself, let's go ahead and cd to that directory that was the mount path. So user share nginx html. And once we're there, we can echo this uh, html, so h1, this is my website, just to give it a nice h1 tag into, and that's pipe, that's, um, I'll put that to the same uh, directory we're in. We, we'll do explicit in this case. So user share nginx html, and then index.html. We could have just, I guess, I'll put that to index.html, but I want to be explicit to make sure it goes in the right directory. All right, now we uh, list the contents of our directory. We see our index.html, and now let's exit out. So now that we have this file, index.html, that exists in this nginx.html directory, which is where our persistent volume is located, um, if we SSH to node 01, and then uh, it was in the mount directory, right? So cd mount data, cd mount, there we go. So there's our index to HTML. It's the same index to HTML that we just created. This is my website, cool. So let's clear the screen, exit out of there, go back to our control plane so we can use our kubectl command line. And now um, we have this one pod, right? So let's go ahead and edit this pod. K edit pod pv dash pod. And let's give it a different name. Let's do. So let's call this pv pod two. And it didn't really change anything with the pod that's running uh, because I'm not allowed to change the name of a running pod. But that's fine. It stored a copy of my changes to this temp directory, a kubectl edit 233911, blah, blah, blah. So now what I can do is k replace dash f, and I'll just point to that file. And then I'll do a force to um, force replace. So now that that's been uh, replaced, let's skip pods again. And now we have two pods. So it didn't really, didn't really replace it, it just um, created it. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, delete this pod. K okay, delete this first pod, PV dash pod, uh, so that we can we can make sure that that we're demonstrating, you know, the persistence of data in this case from PV pod to PV pod two. 
and I have to specify pod, pv pod, if I can spell it right. And okay, get pods again. And now I just have pv pod too. All right. So now let's go ahead and see if within pv pod two, if that that index.html file just uh, still exists. So I can uh, open up a shell again to that pv pod two. So k okay, exec it pv pod two, and then I'll do a shell. And then I will either list the contents directly or change directory into user share nginx html again. And then there it is. And then if I cat it out, index.html, I'll see this is my website. Cool. So we have proven that our data persisted beyond the life of that pod, being that we um, deleted the first pod and then created the second pod in its place.